In this tutorial, we're going to model and animate these seven iconic shapes that can turn into any digit from 0 to 9, but we're not going to do it in 2D like you've seen in standard digital clocks a million times before. Today, we're going to give this a mechanical twist by giving thickness and materials to these segments so they can be rotated in 3D space. And not only is this a fun modeling exercise, it also opens the door to some more advanced concepts I've been experimenting with that I'm very excited to show you. So the base shape is a hexagon shape, and we can make that shape by adding a circle. So let's go Shift A, Mesh, Circle. And in this little Add Circle menu here, you can press this arrow and you can lower the vertices to 6. So now we have a hexagon shape, and we're going to make this just a lot wider. Press Tab to go to Edit Mode, and then we're going to rotate this by 30 degrees. So let's hold down Control. And I also want to rotate it on the x-axis by 90 degrees. So now when you view it from the front by pressing minus Y or numpad 1, now you can see that we have this beautiful hexagon shape. And to make this wider, like uh, the segment that we see here, let's just click and drag and select these three. And let's press G and X. Yeah, maybe a little bit further. It doesn't really matter how far because we can tweak this. And then I also think I want these to be a little bit farther apart. So you can select these two and press S and then just scale it up. Yeah, but we'll come back to this. So now you can see we have it a little bit off axis. We want it to be completely center. So you can just right click, set origin to geometry, and then you can go object, clear, location, which is Alt G. So now we have this at our center. Let's press tab to go to edit mode and let's fill it. So let's press F and now it's filled. So now we can start duplicating this. And instead of just going object, duplicate objects, we want to duplicate linked so we can keep them linked, which is really nice. So let's press Alt D to duplicate linked and let's press Z to move it on the Z axis. Yeah, I think this is good. And now let's select the other one. Let's press Alt D and then press R and it will rotate around the center and hold down control and let's do 90 degrees. And you can see this doesn't really line up well, but I'm going to show you a really nice trick to just fix that. So now let's select this center one here and let's press Shift S. And then as you're holding down Shift S, you can go cursor to selected. And that means that now we have the cursor selected to this. And then we can set our pivot point to be the 3D cursor. So now when you select these three, you can press Alt D, R, and it will rotate around and you can hold down Control and you will have a perfect number eight. Okay, so now here's why we did this duplicate linked, because now if you select this bottom segment here, you can press tab to go to edit mode. And you can, for example, select these two segments here and you can press S and you can scale them down and all of these will update. And the same goes for these outer as well. So if you box select these two at the top and then the two at the bottom as well, now you can press S and you can scale this down and you can see here we have our seven segment display. So now you can scale this down, for example, you can scale them on the X axis. And then if you're struggling to figure out the perfect thickness because we only have the number eight here, let me show you something really cool. So select all the segments in the number eight and then press Alt D and duplicate it down here. And now let's press Alt D and then just make some copies like this and then press Shift R to repeat that action. So now we have, uh, for example, six numbers. You can delete this. Let's delete this. Oops, that's wrong. This and here. Four, five, six. Okay, so now we have the numbers one to six, which makes this a little bit easier to understand. So if you take this, now you can start scaling them up again. And now here's something really cool. You can press G and then you can press G again. And this will slide along the vertices. And then you can also press C to really increase the thickness. Look at that. So you get this crazy. Yeah, but I think I want to do maybe this. Oh, and also one really cool thing you can do. You can take this number eight and I'm going to duplicate it by pressing Shift D now, not Alt D, just Shift D. So it's just a regular duplication. And now let's uh, select all of these, let's right click and you can go join, Control J. So now if we press tab to go to edit mode, you can select these top ones, these top two, for example, and then you turn on proportional editing and then you set it to linear. You can press G and then X and then you can scroll with your mouse. And then you have the possibility to make it like a little bit more diagonal like this. And now you can make a bunch of copies and you have like a little bit more of a like a retro look if you're into that. OK, let's just uh, get back to this strict square design because that's going to be a lot easier for our next trick. So now what we're going to do, we're going to animate this. I want these pieces to rotate around their own axis. Let's say you want to make the number three. So select this one and this one. And now you can rotate this like this, right? Now you have the number three. But if you want the number five, for example, you can't just do, I mean, this looks kind of weird, right? So if you go to transform pivot point and you set it to individual origins, now you can rotate these on the axis and it will look like this. So you will have the number five and it's really easy to make numbers like this. So now you can, for example, say, let's say you want to make number four. 
you can do this and you can press R and X and then X again. So it's a local X axis. But I kind of want them to be like a little bit in front. So to fix this, let's select one of them. And remember, these are all duplicate linked. So you can press tab to go to edit mode, A to select all the vertices, and then press G and then Y and move it just a little bit forward. And now look at that. Look at what just happened. We just moved it in front of its own pivot point. So now what you can do is you can select, for example, let's say you want to make the number seven. Take all of these and press R, X, X. And now you can see when you rotate it, they are offset just a little bit, which I just think looks so much cooler. So if you take all of them, it will kind of look like this. I don't like that these go the same way. So if you like, you can take these two and you can press R and then just do 180 degrees on the Y axis. So R, Y, 180. Let's do this 180 as well. So now when you rotate this, it will go out like this. Yeah, that's kind of cool. So now all of them. Yeah, I like that. Now, since these are still linked, we can do changes to one of them and it will happen to all of them. So select one of the segments, press tab to go to edit mode and press E to extrude. And you can make these segments a little bit thicker, which I think is really nice. And instead of selecting these vertices all the time, we can go up here and you can set the select mode to face select instead. Or you can just use one, and, one, two and three on your keyboard. So let's select this one and press I to inset face. And then let's press E and extrude it inwards. So now we have a little bit of a detail that's going to look really cool once we get some lighting in here. But I want these to be attached a little bit. So on the back here, let's select the faces here and let's go I to inset and let's just make like a really small one like this. And remember to set your pivot point back to median point. We can scale it on the X axis like this. I want to actually scale it up a little bit and then I want to extrude it back. And then it's all about finding kind of what the, the vibe you're looking for. Like you can start adding stuff if you like and they will show up on all of these. So it's like a great way to just get some details if you want that. But we're going to try and keep things a little bit simple today. So now if you rotate this on the local X axis by pressing R and X, X, you can see it will rotate around like this. OK, so now let's start adding some materials to this so we can really see what's happening. I want to change this to the cycles render engine because I love cycles. And now you can also see these grooves a little bit better. These details are really coming forward. So let's go uh, shift A and just make a ground plane and let's scale it up and move it down. So now let's go uh, shift A and let's make a light. I want to do an area light and I want to move it above like this. And you can right click, increase the size and you can right click, increase the power. And let's just scale this up a lot. And to increase the contrast, you can go to the world properties and set the strength to zero. This is the standard setup I use for most of my stuff. I want the light to be a little bit brighter. So let's go right click and just light power. Nice. OK, so now the problem with this setup is that if you view this from the front here, let's say you want to make the number seven. So let's select this one, this one, this one, this one. Yeah, this four down like this, for example. We technically can see the number seven, but it's kind of difficult. I mean, it's not really that much difference in color, <laughs> which is a problem. And also these are intersecting a little bit. So we can just make everything a little bit smaller. Let's select one of the segments. Press tab to go to edit mode, A to select everything. And now let's scale this down. Yeah, I think this is good. Okay, so now let's add some materials. So let's select this and let's go to material properties and let's make a new material. Let's call this dark because we know that this has to be dark. I'm just gonna give this a diffuse shader and I'm gonna make it really dark. And then let's make another material. Let's press this plus icon here and let's call this bright. And now let's set this surface. Hang on this surface here. Let's click this button and let's set this to emission. But now nothing happens and that's because we have designed the materials yet. So select the segment, press tab to go to edit mode. Use this face select by pressing three and select the face that you want to be bright. Select the bright material and then click assign. So now all of these are assigned. And you can even give it like a yellowish color if you want to, which is kind of like on brand. Let's try and make the number seven again. Let's view this from the front and let's rotate it. Look at that. Now we have our clock. So now we can start animating this and we can start having a lot of fun. So let's say we want to start with the number zero. So let's take this first one in the center here. We're going to move it on the negative value. So it's kind of negative, like minus 90 degrees. And now let's go ahead and make an animation that turns this into number one. So that means we're going to need to animate this, this, this and this. So on the first frame, make sure on the first frame, let's select this, hold down shift and select all of them. And then you can go K to insert a keyframe and then let's go rotation. 
And now let's move, for example, 40 frames. Let's press R, X, X, and then let's move it so they are no longer visible. And then hold down Control and do 90 degrees. And then press K and then rotation again. So now if you go to the first frame, you can see that we have an animation that moves like this. So that's one. And then let's pause this for 20 frames, for example. So let's just take everything that we changed and go K, insert, rotation keyframe. And now we're going to make the number two. So we're going to give, let's just add a keyframe to all of them, actually. So let's press K, rotation, and let's figure out what's number two here. Okay, so let's do uh, 100 frames. We don't want this one. So we're going to rotate this. Uh, away like this minus 90 this one is going to be turned off this one is going to be turned on again and then we want these three as well okay nice remember to select all of them before you move on the timeline k and then rotation so now if you press play at the beginning of the animation you have zero one two okay so now that you know this you can go crazy with it you can feel free to make like more details at the back here maybe something that is holding this up i think that would be really cool or maybe you can even turn this into some sort of geometry node setup that just allows you to animate it by just typing in numbers the possibilities are endless but i have tried to take this to the next level so let me just uh, show you the project file that i've been working with okay so here is a seven segment display but instead of it lighting up the scene it has material that will become bright so it enters the light. You see that? And this is like a really detailed material as well. So if you view this from the camera, now you can see that it kind of, it opens up and then it kind of becomes this display. These robot arms are kind of moving around and it is still a seven segment display, but it's kind of, yeah. This is a pretty significant setup that I spent some time on. And then I also did this rotation at the end. So these are actually all rigged using inverse kinematic as well, which is kind of powerful. It really turns this into something that feels a little bit more alive, you know? Here you can see what it looks like from behind, which is kind of cool. Yeah. And then there's also something quite fun with this rotation effect that you can actually add because these aren't really intersecting. Oh wait, they are actually intersecting a little bit. Okay, so I was supposed to end the video there, but I've been just experimenting with this a little bit more. And I came up with this concept that use a rack and pinion drive system, apparently is what it's called. So I have all the segments attached to these gears that can move around like this. And then the segments have different colors. So if you, for example, move this over here, and then you can take these three and you can move them over like this. And then once you start moving these around, you can actually draw the numbers with this method. So at this point, I guess I'm doing whatever I can to just not turn the segments on and off. I just really like to move them around and see the possibilities there. So I really love this effect that you can see that these small gears are rotating around. So I added this frosted glass on top. So now you can actually see these gears rotating below this frosted glass, which I just think is a really cool effect. If you want to download these project files and play around with them, you can check out my Patreon. That is a really nice way to support this channel. So yeah, those are my suggestions for uh, seven segment displays. And I am very excited to see what ideas you can come up with. And for the final rendered result, I tried to make this a little bit cinematic. So please enjoy and thanks for watching. <laughs>